First up, we have Mesoblast Limited, ASX code MSV. The company is a world leader in developing allergenic off-the-shelf cellular medicines for the treatment of severe and life-threatening inflammatory conditions. Presenting today is Mesoblast Chief Executive, Silvio, Silvio Atescu. Silvio, so, sorry, Silvio, thanks for your time. Over to you. Thanks very much for having me. If we could uh, go forward, please. Next slide. And, and one more. Okay, so this slide summarizes some of the um, aspects to, to our leadership in this space. Um, we're, we're developing um, off-the-shelf therapeutics, really cells in a in a in a vial in a bottle. Um, we're duly listed on the Nasdaq and the ASX. Um, we've got a first product that uh, is in front of the FDA, with potentially um, the first cell therapy to be approved uh, as an allergenic medicine in the US, January this coming January, uh, and we've got several other products in phase three that provide a very deep pipeline of potential commercial products. We've got um, over a thousand patents that that cover uh, the use, the, the products and the way to manufacture and the, makes us a real dominant player with uh, patent portfolios that prevent others from getting into our space. And we've got manufacturing facilities um, under contract, uh, including the first one for the product that we hope to be approved shortly that has already been inspected by the FDA. Um, it's it's a facility in Singapore that that uh, the FDA has green-lighted for commercial production. Next slide, please. This is a snapshot of our late-stage product pipeline. In blue um, is a products derived from a first-generation platform called Remy Stem Cell, and in green are products that are generated from our second generation um, enhanced platform called Rex Lemmy Strocell. The Remy Stem Cell platform uh, underpins Rionsil, our product that's in front of the FDA right now that we expect to, to have approval for uh, no later than the first week of January, possibly sooner. Um, and uh, it, 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 the approval in the first instance is for pediatric graft versus host disease, which is a life-threatening complication of a bone marrow transplant that has uh, as, as high a mortality as 70 to 90% with no drugs approved in children for this condition. Uh, Post-approval, we expect to e expand the label for the product from pediatric to adults with the same condition, which um, would expand the market by more than threefold. Uh, the the a further extension of potential indications when the product's approved is in the inflammatory bowel disease space, which is a much bigger market. Again, that's Crohn's disease and ulcerative colitis. Uh, and so what you can see is that a first product approval um, of Rionsil opens the door to multiple new indications. And so our, our focus not only is on approval, but on commercial manufacturing and supporting its growth uh, in, in multiple new areas. The Rex Lemmy Strocell platform, which is, as I said earlier, the second generation more potent product, um, is being developed for two major indications for local delivery. The, the, the Rionsil product is injected intravenously. The Rex Lemmy Strocell product um, is injected either in the heart, where its brand name will be Revascor for treatment of both pediatric and adult um, heart disease, heart failure. More about that later, but um, we're pretty excited about the results we've had with children with congenital heart disease and with adults with end-stage heart, heart failure. And then the same product is being developed and is currently in phase three for severe refractory back pain due to um, inflammatory disc disease. And after after patients have, have um, uh, worked their way through and not responsive to uh, non-steroidal drugs or to opioids, there's really nothing else other than surgery and interventions. And that's where our product is going to come in. And we're, we're very excited by the results of the first phase three trial. And we hope that the second phase three will replicate those results. Next slide, please. So the, the objectives for the coming six to 12 months, and there are a, a number of major inflection points. Rionsil is the first and foremost, uh, the one that, that uh, is on the horizon for approval no later than January 7th. Uh, and as I said, that that's for 
pediatric and then for a label extension into adults. The chronic low back pain is actively enrolling. Uh, it will take about 12 months to complete enrollment of the, uh, the second confirmatory phase three trial. And then the heart failure program, uh, we expect to meet with the FDA um, this before the end of this year, as well as early next year on two discussions on potential filing for approval in children with heart failure and in adults with severe end-stage heart failure. Next slide, please. The financials uh, are on this slide. Um, importantly, we announced just this week that we've entered into uh, an option for convertible notes with our largest shareholder. Um, our largest shareholder owns about 16% of the company, and the contract contractual arrangement we've entered into is that at Mesoblast's sole discretion, we are able to, uh, to to issue up to 50 million US convertible notes at a premium uh, of 125% on a five-day VWAP well, at the time of, of having entered into the option um, and on approval by the FDA of the product. So the rationale for entering into this transaction was so that um, on FDA approval, we have access to substantial capital to support the commercial launch, the, the inventory build, uh, and, and operational activities for the subsequent 12 months. I think it was, we were very excited that, that our largest shareholder showed this degree of commitment to the company. Um, in addition to the, the option to bring down 50 million US, we also uh, have uh, our last cash balance was 63 million US. Um, with an additional 10 million US available to us from an existing facility on FDA approval. So um, we're well cashed up and we have uh, substantial resources to ensure that post approval we're, um, we're geared for success and growth. Uh, our net operating cash spend uh, for the quarter end of June 30th, which was the last quarter of the quarter, was 10.2 million. So we're very careful that we. We don't burn cash excessively, and we've reduced our overall cash burn um, for the previous 12-month period by 37% um, uh, from the comparative quarter. So you can see we're being very careful in how we spend. We've reduced uh, ex expenditures, particularly on clinical development, because we don't need it. Uh, and we're, we're deploying cash towards commercial launch activities, and, and uh, we, you know we will, over time, build inventory. That's really our focus right now. Next slide, please. Now, this GVHD product that we hope will be approved very shortly. Uh, the market opportunity, there's about 30,000 bone marrow transplants globally, uh, of which about almost half of those are in the US, and 20% of the bone marrow transplants are performed in children. About 50% of these bone marrow transplants, allogeneic transplants, um, are, are uh, cause uh, graft versus host disease, where the actual bone marrow attacks the body. And if if steroids don't fix it, and half the time steroids don't, then there there's really no alternative. Children have no approved therapies at all. And I said earlier, the mortality is very high. Next slide, please. So our interactions with the FDA have been extremely positive. We met with them. Uh, in March, and uh, uh, the FDA encouraged us to file our BLA, the Biologics License application. Um, we filed it uh, end of end of June. It was accepted by the BLA within two weeks, which is a very short time. Um, and they're currently in the middle of review. We've had backwards and forwards, lot, lots of ongoing questions and responses, and um, that's a good thing. Very good to be in active dialogue with the FDA when they're reviewing your your submission. Uh, they've given us a, a a date by which they must give a decision, and that's January seventh. But given that that a lot of the review occurred even last year, including the inspection of manufacturing, which is already behind us, um, it's possible that 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 uh, date may come in a little bit early. Next slide, please. Um, and so our pre-launch activities right now, we're very much focused. And we are we are going to launch this product ourselves, no partners. And that's because the we want to retain revenue 
um, and uh, the, the substantial opportunity in front of us for this disease. It's a high priced, highly reimbursable uh, product. Uh, you're talking about a li lifespan extending treatment, where as many as almost 50% of the children that we treat are alive at five years. That's a 50% cure rate effectively. And uh, payers in the US are reimbursing curative drugs for genetic conditions, immune mediated conditions at very high prices. Um, and so this is important that we do this well, that we retain the revenue stream. And to do that, um, we, we're, we, we're building out market access initiatives with payer outreach. Um, we're building a medical re medical educational team that will provide education to both the payers and to the hospitals. Um, the 15 centers provide do 50% of the pediatric transplants. And we're already in those centers by virtue of um, expanded access programs where we provide ourselves for free up to now. Um, so they, they're very familiar with us and, and uh, they certainly know the product well. So the type of um, sales reps that we're going to need uh, are very small, maybe no more than about 12 to 15 people will allow us to access not just the top 15, but maybe as many as the top 40 centers across the US. Um, and at the same time, we are engaging with the key opinion leaders who have the, the greatest experience with our product. And as you would expect, we're, we're building out a whole raft of um, non-promotional activities, educational awareness, payer engagement, et cetera. This is all happening now ahead of the approval. Uh, on approval, we, we will be putting working with the hospitals and having our product formally on what's called formulary um, with formal reimbursement that that uh, we can start to bill. Next slide, please. Uh, and, and I think that that's what this, this slide talks about, the stage, the approach, not a lot of sales force initially, something that's highly manageable by us as, as, a, as a company. And I think it, it will provide the proof of concept that we uh, as a as a cell therapy company, not only are able to get FDA support and regular support, but we're able to show that we can build out a, a targeted sales force with a with a, a bona fide revenue stream. Next slide, please. Uh, moving on to the the other couple of products that I think we're very excited about, the the back pain product in particular. Uh, I don't know how many of you out there suffer with discogenic back pain, meaning disc inflammation, severe pain, but it's a bad, bad disease. Over 7 million patients in the US, about as many patients across the major European centers are afflicted with this. And 50% um, of opioid prescriptions in the US are for exactly this condition, chronic low back pain that is refractory to, to other drugs and, and, and conservative agents. Um, therefore, this is the, the, a major cause of the current opioid epidemic and the risk of overdosing, of course. So if we could go to the next slide, please. Um, the, the results that we've um, shown from the first phase three trial are just incomparable. And what you can see here uh, in a randomized controlled study of about 400 patients in red is the change in pain from one single injection maximum at 12 months, and then persisting for at least 36 months after one injection. And you compare that to the green line at the top, that delta between green and red is, is extremely large. If we can achieve that difference in reduction in pain in trial number two, we'll have an approval um, for, for this product. The, the unmet need, as I've mentioned, is very large. And if successful, uh, this product is a multi-billion dollar a year revenue revenue potential for the company. Next slide. And, and so where are we with this overall program? We've got alignment with the FDA on the endpoint being 12 months reduction in pain. Um, and that that's because we achieved exactly that in trial number one, and they want to see it again in trial number two. We're able to manufacture the product. We've made all the product that's needed for this trial. The trial is currently underway. It's from rolling across um, up to 40 sites in the US. We have um, what's called an RMAT designation from the FDA, which is which is like a breakthrough designation, which allows us to have early 
dialogue with the agency. Um, but I think this th this trial will will have more news for you guys over the next twelve months. It's it's the potential for a major partnering deal because I think um, on on approval uh, we need to have a commercial partner that uses their commercial channels to sell the product for us. This is not an area that we would build out our own sales force. It's 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 a large bite. In Europe, we already have um, Europe's number one paint company, uh, Grunenthal, that has taken a license and on approval and potential launch in Europe, uh, we are eligible for up to $100 million US in milestone payments from Grunenthal. A similar structure uh, probably um, skewed much more towards us on on gaining approval in the US uh, is likely to, to, to be the outcome with either a major device or pharmaceutical partner. Next slide, please. And finally, um, just touching on, on cardiac, we recently uh, announced a successful um, phase, phase two clinical trial, randomized controlled study in children with uh, a rare congenital heart disease called uh, hypoplastic left heart syndrome. This is a condition where without surgery, the kids die. With surgery, they live um, a compli complicated life because their right side of the heart um, is the only chamber they've got. Uh, we entered into a relationship with Boston Children's Hospital where what they wanted to do was to use ourselves to inject into the tiny little left ventricle the kids are born with and see if they can enlarge the left chamber large enough so they can end up creating a surgery surgical procedure that allows the left side of the heart to pump and maintain circulation of these kids. The objective then is to give them a normal lifespan. Next slide, please. Uh, th these are very complex slides. Um, we bottom line is what we showed is that we could increase the proportion of that, that we could increase the size of the left ventricle by about double. The, the left ventricle enlarged uh, a year after injection of our stem cells, and that allowed the surgeon to increase the proportion of kids who could tolerate this definitive surgery from just thirty percent to about sixty four percent. So that means that that the the injection of our cells allows many more kids to have a, a, a surgical procedure that is life saving that gives them a normal circulation for many years. On that basis, um, we've gone to the FDA and requested them to be awarded what's called a rare pediatric disease designation and an orphan drug designation. That that has implications commercially because if we get a, approval for our cardiac drug in children. Um, the rare pediatric disease designation voucher that comes with it is potentially sellable to other pharma companies for up to $100 million. That's sort of um, quantum. And, and that's because it it, it relieves um, companies by at least a year of uh, FDA review periods. And a year of reduction in timeframes to approvals uh, can be worth billions of dollars for a drug that has a multi-billion dollar opportunity. Next slide, please. Sorry, Silvio, I do appreciate yeah. there's a lot of uh, information for you to get through. I think I'm, I think I'm, this is my last my last slide. Great, I'll let you finish up on this yeah. one and then ask a few questions. Terrific. And so we, we've at the same time moved with a, with two large studies in adults with heart failure, which is a, a another blockbuster indication. Um, six and a half million people in the U.S. suffer with severe heart failure, and despite existing drugs, the once they get to end stage, the mortality is as high as 50% at five years. And for these patients, there is nothing, right? So we've completed two trials. We've shown that we can reduce mortality on top of existing standard of care. And on the basis of that, the FDA has said that we can go ahead and file for an accelerated approval um, in, in the coming year. And that's that's a major objective of ours uh, after we've had approval for the pediat for the pediatric graphosis host disease uh, product. Uh, on that note, I think I might stop. I think I've, I've, I've highlighted the many the many uh, inflection points and news flow that I think are, are just ahead of us. Thank you. Thanks, Silvio. So we do have time for a few quick questions. Um, could you provide more color on the underlying platform technology? Sure. So, so we, um, uh, extract starting material cells 
from bone marrow of healthy volunteers and we isolate them using proprietary methods. So very rare cells, maybe one in a hundred thousand. We extract, we purify, we create what are called cell banks from these cells. Uh, and then we're able to expand them out in, um, uh, in a process that takes about four weeks to generate thousands of vials that are then frozen with say 25 million cells per vial are frozen at minus 130 degrees. And what, what you have is a highly scalable um, industrialized process with supply chain logistics from the manufacturing site where we make all this frozen shipping by Federal Express, for example, to our warehousing across the US. We use specialty um, distributors in the US that have got what's called cold chain capabilities and they ship the cells um, frozen at minus 130, ultimately to the hospitals. And the hospitals have also little frozen containers where they keep the cells. And as they need them, they will bring them from their, their facility into treating patients. Um, each vial is about um, a, a, a 10 cc vial with, with uh, about uh, four mils of cells frozen. And each vial is thawed at the bedside um, in, in about a five minute process uh, in, a, in a water bath and then put into an IV bag and injected intravenously. So it's a very, very simple process, easy logistics, but we, we own the, the whole process from, from start to end. And it, it's obviously there's a lot of IP around all of this. And then Sylvia, is it fair to say that your low back pain therapy has the biggest commercial potential of your products? I think the low back pain is, is the multi-billion dollar opportunity and it's a very simple product to con conceive. Again, a frozen product, but instead of it being used IV with an infusion, it's it will be used by um, um, orthopedic surgeons or pain physicians as an outpatient procedure. Uh, you can schedule it ahead of time patient com comes in uh, and really in a, in a 20 minute procedure on on a on, on a on the bed um, with a very small needle the, the physician injects the cells straight into the disc um, almost like a like a steroid injection which is, which is currently done routinely so it's a very simple procedure but what we're seeing is quite dramatic long-term reduction ba basically patients are put into remission from coming in with severe pain so uh, the, the reimbursement for something like that is, um, you know, we, we think very substantial um, for, for a pain medication that puts people back to work. And uh, our modeling suggests that at peak, a product like that in the US alone would, would generate about 3 billion in sales. Thanks, Silvio. I appreciate that you have a lot to get through there. So thank you mm -hmm. for doing that in a short period of time. It's very fascinating work that you're doing. So thank you for your time. And I hope you have a great weekend. Thanks for having me. Appreciate it.